Okay, thank you for uh, having me here again tonight. Uh, so for the purposes of tonight, I know that uh, we have prepared and presented on the report last week with regard to the results of all the occupied air sampling that had been completed, had been completed in all the schools with rubberized gym floors. Um, one of the recommendations was where it could be budgeted uh, to recommend the removal. And I know that the conversation that just took place about seeing what could be done about budgeting additional more. So uh, my understanding is I was asked to come here tonight to talk about the potential feasibility, cost, scope, and just give a little bit more feedback so that we all know the path moving forward. So uh, first step, just so that we're all on the same page for the record, we have rubberized gym floors at Bell's, Birch's, Herfill, TJ, I'm sorry, Thomas Jefferson, Wedgwood, Whitman Elementary Schools, Bunker Hill Middle School in the gym and the auxiliary slash adaptive gym, and at the uh, dance studio of the Washington Township High School. So what I wanted to do first was I wanted to talk about the preliminary scope of work that would be incorporated into taking care of these projects and moving them forward. Um, so the first would be to complete a bid package for inclusive of both abatement and new flooring installation at the gyms. Uh, once that bid package is put out to let the contractors and hopefully successfully awarded at something we can move forward with, um, at each location there will be establishment of containment within the work zone. The purpose of this containment is number one, to keep everything contained within it, but also you have the flexibility of use of the remainder of the space within the buildings. Um, the abatement slash removal of the flooring and the adhesive would be taken out. Uh, after that point, you'd like to put a quality vapor barrier, and I say quality vapor barrier over the concrete, that quality vapor barrier um, is actually a sealant. And one of the things that uh, hurts us during construction windows, if you don't go with the right vapor barrier, if you have moisture or humidity or anything in the floors, it can slow you down. So we want to go with one that deals with high humidity conditions because of that potential. Um, after that vapor barrier goes down, we want to do the first round of clearance air testing. That's done by a third party entity. So this is even before the new flooring is down to make sure we have clearance air testing at that moment. Um, once that is completed, to put, install a leveling compound system, that would be both a uh, crack suppressant and be a structural leveling compound to put in a new flooring, the type of which I believe we'll discuss a little bit later, and then do final third party clearance testing on each one of the spaces. Only after that final clearance testing would be done would the containment be removed. Obviously mixed into this is going to be details of refinement within the containment, uh, within cleaning procedures, how that takes place. That's gonna be part of the bid package as it's developed. So uh, um, the business administrator had asked us for some level of preliminary pricing associated with these floors. So I wanted to talk about the basis of that preliminary pricing and where we go from here so we try to understand our unknowns and our expectations. So the basis of that pricing was to go back and replace with what you call that pour and pad, pad and pour rubber floor, which is a similar floor to what is currently in these spaces, obviously without any mercury. Um, now we can discuss other options for those floors. Um, the scope, as I had previously discussed, um, at the time we had approximate room sizes, um, anticipated floor thicknesses based on the flooring cores that had been removed before, um, a modest level of striping similar to what's currently in the spaces because added striping caused an added cost, um, and us having a competitive bidding market um, with the idea also that they would be doing it during normal work hours. So. I want to talk a little bit about the flooring materials alternative. So the four alternatives, and really three, but I'll mention four, that I wanted to discuss were the pad and pour synthetic floor, which is similar to what you currently have. Um, synthetic sheet flooring, which is again an athletic surface, but it goes down in sheets instead of a poured floor. Uh, maple hardwood flooring, similar to what you see at Orchard Valley, Chestnut Ridge, and the high school. And the other thing that sometimes is considered in a gym is a uh, vinyl composite tile, VCT, that you may see in a classroom or a corridor, but that is usually only considered for all-purpose rooms at an elementary school, not the gyms. So for the purposes of this conversation this evening, that was eliminated for further conversation. I just wanted to make sure we brought it up. So if we go with the port and pad synthetic rubber floor, um, there's, a, there's pros and there's cons to every choice that you make. Um, the, like I had indicated before, the estimates, the preliminary estimates were based on a, a pad and then a poor synthetic floor. 
the benefits are it has a seamless top layer. So once you put it down, you pour it all as one pour, it has a seam. Now that doesn't mean that you don't make seams when you make repairs, but its initial product is seamless. Um, it is, the top layer itself is also self-leveling and self-smoothing, so it's very forgiving of any deviations within the concrete or the flooring material underneath. Um, it also has the ability, um, say 20 years in the future, to recoat that flooring. Obviously not if you're dealing with a hazardous material situation. Uh, and then it also has the affordability, which is why it is so popular. One of the key cons of this flooring is it has very limited layout options because you're going with just a poor color that you're pouring on top and then the striping layout. Um, there's variations in opinions as far as um, what is the best play surface. Um, and that is something I'm not prepared to get into tonight as far as that's a lot of athletic choices and opinions. What I will say is one of the cons that's not widely stated, but I think we need to say here tonight for everyone to understand, is, is it's probably that right now there's a bit of a stigma on these floors. Because many of them, especially here in this district, every rubberized floor that you have, unfortunately, even the ones that were installed when they shouldn't have had mercury in it, had mercury in it. So um, obviously if you're gonna go move forward with these, we wanna get past that stigma and make sure that we have every assurance um, in the documentation provided by the manufacturer, the installer, and samples of what actual materials poured to be tested um, on those floors to ensure that we deal with that con. But I, I do think that's a con that may not be publicized, but one worth discussion. The next type of flooring that you may have uh, heard of is called uh, synthetic sheet flooring or vinyl sheet flooring. Um, so basically, this is rolls of a flooring material that goes down. Uh, a lot of the pros of this is it can be customized. And one of the beauties of it is you can put it in with a wood grain look. And a lot of people like it for that alternative at an elementary level because you can provide a wood grain look but provide the, the impact, the fall, and the affordability closer to the pad and poured rubber floor. Some of the cons that we need to consider is that it is installed in six and a half or so foot sections that gets rolled out, so there are seams. Um, although the seams are welded, it is a point of failure. Um, and so this is more prone to proper installation practices. We want to make sure that there aren't failures of those seams. The cost is on par, but a little bit more than a pad and pour floor. It could be up to two dollars more a square foot based on the thickness and the level of striping you choose. Uh, it does require, when you, it's the end of a life and those sheets are peeling or they're failing at their seams, you're removing it and you're putting in a new floor as opposed to the potential to recoat the other floor. When uh, the third floor I wanted to talk about was maple hardwood flooring. And again, this is similar to what you see in large gymnasiums at a high school level, collegiate level, and again, Orchard Valley and Chestnut Ridge have your hardwood flooring. One of the things with the hardwood flooring is you get the more customization opportunities even on the wood grain look and the wood grain style and flexibility. It is consistent with your other middle schools here in district that you may want to consider for Bunker Hill. It is the traditional basketball choice for the wood bounce for basketball. Um, understanding of however the schools are used for multi-sports. Uh, so some of the cons are, one of the biggest cons is cost. You're talking about four to eight dollars more a square foot. Um, it, if you get a leakage or high humidity condition within the school, it's less tolerant of that. You can have bowing of the wood. Um, it is a high maintenance cost and low versatility for use for a variety of sports. Um, and it's rarely considered at the elementary school level. Um, so I just wanted to kind of throw that out for consideration. Uh, I am not asking at this immediate moment for you to make that choice, but I just wanted to talk about the options. Before I continue, do you want to ask questions specific to those options or do you want me to finish this presentation? I have one. Yes, ma'am. Since we're dealing with a time issue, because we want to get this done this summer, what is the difference in time issues on the installation of each of these materials? Okay, so from a timing perspective, and I will talk about that a little bit later as we get through, um, a lot of the timing is going to be associated with the concrete, the vapor barrier, the leveling compound, and not so much the floor that's going in on top of it. Um, a lot of those can be produced within a certain time frame. So I will address timing a little bit later in the presentation. Construction, we can't guarantee 
guarantee no, sir. that the timeline uh, will be followed because, as we know, things come up. So our concern would be, um, would the school be able to be used, all the schools be able to be used on the opening of school and that the students can use the rest of the building in a safe atmosphere? So um, I'll come back to that again a little bit later into this presentation. But what I would say to you is that um, obviously if the project runs long, the gyms would be under containment. Uh, the one thing that we would obviously have to discuss would be the curing time and odors associated with a rubber floor and that coating and that painting. Um, from one aspect, from the MSDS sheets, the safety protocols could be in place, but there is definitely an odor that you smell and a perception associated with that odor above and beyond any actual risk and concern. But that, but I, that, but that odor is not a risk to staff and students. Again, you have to follow the MSDS protocol for ventilation and sealing off of the space. Um, so depending on what floor is chosen, usually you like to have that cure for a week before you have staff and students in there. Okay. how much mercury is actually in the concrete. You're talking about putting this coating on top. Our concern, obviously, we don't want this to happen again. And uh, even though it might be cheaper, um, what we don't want is a reoccurrence within another eight-year period. What guarantees are there that this laminate or this coating is guaranteed for the life of the flooring, or actually, forget the flooring, the school? So, Ray, I promise you I will answer your question, but I want to get through where I actually talk about the core results and what those, what factors follow through after that. Um, so, one question, Anita, on the floor. Yes, ma'am. Yes. So, I know you said that you can't comment on the safety of the, the different types of floors in general, but not having seams and being able to coat a floor if it lifts or there's, you know, humidity issue, that makes it safer, correct? Yeah, not having seams that may peel up and rip. My comment wasn't that I couldn't comment on the safety of the floors. Proper installation and proper maintenance, they all have a good safety factor. There's just different opinions as far as the bounce and the athletic sports and what you want to play on what different surfaces, which is what I was saying. But yes, absolutely, if you have a floor that's prone to seam failure um, or something that you can repair, you can repair it at the seams. You can try to stitch in repairs on the sheet vinyl flooring as well. You don't have to take out a whole sheet. but Yes, obviously, if it's less prone to failure, it's less prone to instantaneous safety items that you can't foresee. Okay, thanks. So um, in anticipation of a decision by the board um, to accelerate this, because obviously if we wish to get, when we had talked previously, the thought process was to try to get two or three of these done this summer. If we're talking about all nine, there's a more accelerated process I have to follow. So we already started uh, last week sending someone out to as built and measure out all the gym floors in detail to try to get more information in preparation. So I was able to refine the square footage of these spaces a little bit more than the preliminary estimates I gave Ms. Meehan. So I want to talk about some next steps um, that we would need to take. So the first is that we know that we have mercury in the rubber gym flooring. Um, the question is, is it in the concrete underneath? Raise question. So uh, assuming that you give me the authorization to proceed, I have made all arrangements to conduct the cores of the concrete floor this Saturday. If it bleeds into Sunday, it'll bleed into Sunday, but this Saturday. Um, the idea being that I would rather not play with the unknown of is there mercury in the floor. I want to core it in advance. Um, I want to know what we're going to run into. Uh, it doesn't mean that a core tells you everything but it's the most information we can glean in advance of this process. So uh, if that is authorized, it'll be coordinated and notified with the administration. Those results are you know, anywhere from uh, a week plus or minus out to being received, but our process would be to move forward if authorized tonight with bid specification on all the gym floors. Going along with that is submission of applications to the New Jersey Department of Education as well as uh, the authority to modify your long-range facilities plan for the process. One of the things that I don't want to scare anybody, but I want you to know so that there's no surprise, is the schools 
each site has to actually get an EPA site ID so we follow the cradle to grave of any hazardous materials which this would be considered. So we'll assist through that process of getting each one of the sites given that EPA site ID. I just don't want somebody to say, what is this? Right, so I just want you to understand that's a step in the process. Um, our goal, and I cannot tonight give you a guarantee, but our goal would be to make the effort to get this bid out for your consideration at the May meeting. Um, as I mentioned, the as building of the gym spaces for dimensions and layout, and that preliminary on the existing has started to be completed. That would be the earliest. It doesn't have to be at that moment. I apologize if I threw anybody off. I didn't warn anybody with that statement. Um, no, I was just asking if we're, we're framing to open those bids before the work session or the public meeting. It's not right. a lot of time. That's what I was it's, just going to ask, too. It's yeah. going to be depending on how fast I can make it happen and schedule the bid award bid dates. But we'll kind of uh, we'll work through those dates. We typically work through that with the administration to try to refine the dates as best we can. So decisions that we need from the school district. Uh, the first is whether or not you would agree with the scope I mentioned, which in my mind is a minimum scope. It's not necessarily, it, it doesn't, it isn't the minimum scope to the state of New Jersey. It isn't the minimum scope. It's just what I believe is giving you the minimum safe conditions, okay? So um, the next is the flooring material that is preferred. If you are unsure and you give me the authorization to proceed, we do have the option if you wanted to consider both sheet flooring and pad and pour floor at the elementaries of doing alternate bids. And then if you wanted to consider wood flooring at Bunker Hill Main Gym, again, we could do alternate bids for that. So I don't want you to feel like you're locked into a permanent decision on that tonight. We can see how the numbers come in, okay? Um, the next is, does the district wish to proceed with a smaller portion of the project to be considered during the school year? And again, you don't have to make that decision tonight, but I want you to think about it because I would ask for it not long after because we could potentially get a couple of these gyms out for bid um, sooner and receive those bids faster and perhaps start them in the May timeframe. We would obviously have to coordinate activities that are noise generating to not be disruptive, but because the gyms are empty, that gives us the options to consider to try to help our timeframe for summer. Obviously, we would not do any of the um, activities such as with the VOCs that we would have for the final layer during the school year. We wouldn't want to push that for during the school year, but that would be something that could happen in the summer if we accelerated through. Not a requirement. I just wanted to throw it out there as an option. The other that would also solve if we did some of the during um, the latter part of the school year. That vapor barrier would already be up. Yes. Okay, so that answers my other question. That vapor barrier will remain in place in case the school, that the uh, gymnasium in the school is not ready, the rest of the building could be open and it would be safe for the children and staff, right? Yes. And even if we started earlier. Both. Yes. Okay. So that would be the idea. Um, so as far as the details of that, obviously we would work it out with the administration and the staff if that's something you want to entertain. You don't have to say yes, Anina, do it, but if you want me to entertain it, we will try to work through details to make sure we create the best environment. Um, the other thing is that I wanted to get a confirmation from the district that you would be retaining occupancy of the building through the summer and the remaining of the remainder of the school year if we started early, meaning for staff and the potential for parks and recreation. So I want to make sure that the the documentations and the setup and the where the barriers are all put in place, if your anticipation is yes, we're maintaining that occupancy, that we, number one, make sure all the barriers are set in place properly, but also a certain level of notification to contractors to make sure that they know that there may be children present if you're going to have it open for Parks and Rec. Not in their work area, but in the school. And that changes notifications and things along those lines. Um, the big question is, do we wish to proceed with all nine? And then um, I wanted to throw out to you when we get to the further of kind of some of the concerns is that as much as I would love to tell you that you say proceed with all nine, that it's going to come in at a dollar value you can afford, um, I want to have a preparation in your mind that we may need to consider alternates and prioritization. Um, now some future consideration, this goes back to the concrete course. So we want to do those cores to reduce the unknown. So those cores could come back three different ways. 
okay? They could come back with mercury levels that say that the concrete has to be treated as hazardous waste. It could come back with mercury levels, not that it has to be removed, but when it's removed, it has to be removed as hazardous waste. It could come back with mercury levels less than 0.2, meaning it's not something they're concerned about it leaching out, could be landfill applied, not concerned about it leaching into an adjacent surface, and it could remain in place, or it could come back non-detect. Okay, those are the three alternatives. I don't have the answer for you tonight, okay? So um, I need you to be prepared that there would need to be a decision based on those results on how we proceed and how we move forward. Uh, for the purposes of uh, the estimates that we put together, we looked at the possibility of whether we need to be some portion of concrete removal or things along those lines. Um, but if you're looking at a decision of complete concrete removal, uh, you are going to find that those estimates are not gonna hold. With regard to the floors, just simply because this is not a Washington Township problem. This is not a New Jersey problem. This is a national situation going on with the installation of these rubber floors that I need you to be prepared for a flooded market. So if there's a flooded market, the competitive pricing that we could use to come up with estimates is no longer valid. Um, and a flooded market not just impacts the prices you get, but it also impacts the contractor's completion schedule. So I just want to be open, mind, be open with everyone and make sure that we understand the situation at hand. I don't want to give you, I want to make this the best, most successful project we can for you, but I also don't want you to feel like there's a, a promise of everything going perfect and smoothly. Like Rice said, construction has um, no guarantees. The other, uh, not an immediate decision, but once we get the authorization, a decision would need to be made on material to be used, striping and layouts. I'm hoping that you would consider deferring that decision to the principals and perhaps the gym teachers and the individual schools because they're the ones using the gyms for those activities so that we could accelerate that process and then we could speed up our design. That was all I had. Thank yes, you. sir. Oh, I just want to say too, before, um, we're going to take questions from the board, but anybody who uh, is wishing to speak uh, when we're done taking questions from the board, please get a yellow card from the table back there. I forgot to say that earlier and I'll pass it to Dr. Garrison so that we can, you know, get an idea of how many people are, are coming up. Go ahead. Sorry. Going back to the concrete again, um, is it possible to do an alternate bid that would be worst case scenario? Yes. Which, you know what the worst case yes. scenario is. Uh, the scenario where, um, you know, we just um, have to remove the concrete, but it can't be disposed <coughs> in, a, you know, in a regular fashion. And then the scenario, obviously, that we don't need to. Yes, so my so suggestion would be, to again, that. not to place you in a, to force you into decisions when you don't have all the information, would be when we receive those results, if you're anything but in the uh, non-detect and maybe a consideration if you're under the point two, um, that we consider that as an alternate bid scenario. So just to um, address your the decisions needed first yes. before we take general questions, and if there's a general question related to these decisions, just go ahead and ask it. But first, um, are there any comments from the board or questions regarding putting out multiple bids on various products? I personally think that's a wise idea. But what do you all think? I think it's a good idea. Yeah. I agree. Very close. Okay. So bid, you know, put the bid together so that we can see how much it costs for the poor. The, uh, so the poor versus the, the sheet vinyl for the elementaries and the poor sheet vinyl and hardwood for uh, Bunker Hill? Bunker Hill. Yeah. Just the last Just the main the Yeah. Okay. Got it. And since we're replacing the uh, one dance floor, are uh, we... When we go to do that floor, will it be a floor that is for dancing? That's yes, so in there? the dance floor most specifically, other than the others, is where I think we should have a conversation with curriculum about the surface that they most prefer for that scenario because it's not a multi-use, it's, it's right. most substantially. So that's one where I'm looking for that deference to the principal and to the uh, curriculum and or in this case it's not really a gym teacher uh, to go over that. Also, um, the time, the timing and the flooded market is a concern. And I want to see um, if it's possible to put the bids out to award to multiple contractors so they can all be working simultaneously. How, do you, how does the board feel about doing something like that? 
they can phrase it so that um, and open it so that multiple people can get the work. So we can establish it as one set of bid documents, but set it up as multiple contracts. Um, the I I think that I'd like to ask you to wait to make that final decision later on this month. Uh, just to give me an opportunity to reach out to vendors to get an idea of would they bid the one? Do they, you know, are they? Do they have a concern about completion about the market because as market changes, we have it ready. That's a change that we could make right away. We could do it all as one, or we do them as individual contracts, or mm -hmm. maybe group of three contracts. Um, I I think that there's a viability for that idea. Um, I I would ask uh, if it doesn't impact our time frame, then maybe you just defer that a little bit to get me some, let me get some more information and get a feel for if you're going to have savings for economies of scale, if you're going to have savings for one abatement vendor, one GC, one flooring contractor, and they can roll from location to location, and you might get them dedicated. So okay. I, I'm just asking you to defer that if you don't mind. Yeah, I mean, I don't know exactly how that works with all the different third parties, but I just want to make sure if we're saying we're doing it this summer, which we have, that we're doing it this summer. Um, we also are going to need a legal opinion because we're required to go with the lowest responsive bidder. Now, I, I know in a bid you can break it up by job and the lowest one for that job would get it so that would get you multiple but um, after we speak with um, the expert in the purchasing um, we may want to do multiple bids because a lot of times what happened when we were going through the construction um, that we had multiple bid openings and people would come for the first that they didn't get it they would have two envelopes for the second bid depending on whether they got the job or not for what they handed into the next bid so uh, we can discuss that with, um, you know, with the yeah, attorney. Yeah, I, I can just jump in real quick. I think in the public um, contract slot, there is a section that talks about how um, the contract has to be, if it's single in character, if it's about the same scope of the work, it has to be done by the same contractor. So something like that would be something that we'd have to consider in terms of what we have to do. Couldn't you group the elementary schools in the middle? The There's middle definitely ways we could break up the contracts and be very compliant. Uh, my goal is to get you the most successful project. Um, there's multiple ways we can be compliant, um, at least I believe, and obviously we'll review that with purchasing and the solicitor. Um, I guess so I'm not asking you to lock that decision down tonight um, to give us a little bit more leeway to have those conversations. Okay. I think the second most important thing is um, regarding starting in May, starting the projects in May. Does anyone have questions or comments about starting when school is still in session? to make sure that it's very safe. It's safe, yeah. They're going to break stuff up, definitely. So you would be faced with making that decision after you're able to make an award decision. Right. What I can do is put there some, I can work on some language in the bid documents and come up with a game plan. If we know for sure the answer is no, then I'm not going to bother. But if we give that a possibility, if we can create a safe environment, um, you know, we want to make sure that that's a possibility. Anything we can do to give your project more success. I need to bring up for, this isn't about Safety, it's more about perception. Uh, at, at the end of the day, there's always a level of concern that is raised when there's containment or construction ongoing within a building, when there's other activities within the building, when you're doing it in an occupied setting. Um, so I just want to make sure that that's brought up tonight. And that may be something that you, you may end up getting comments from the public on. So I think that you don't, if you want to consider it, if it makes sense and if it's safe and if it helps our schedule, which I believe that it will, um, now we have to get successful contractors to do this, but they're always the busiest in the summer. Getting them in advance saves you time. One more, one more. But I, uh, you won't have to make that decision until we have a construction contract to award. I just want us to make sure that we're not going away from caution for the kids to speed up the process. Mm -hmm. Because when you speed up the process, things un unavoidably things happen. So I want us to make sure that if it, it has to take more time, please let us know that so we are aware. I don't want us to just throw caution to the wind to get it done and it's not done safely or, I hate to use the phrase, half-assed. Got it. And um, <laughs> Julie, Joe, um, Thank you, Mrs. Just, Betts. To, just to confirm, the um, after-school programs, the summer programs are not at these schools. Right. In, yeah, any facility, in any facility, in any space in the facility. Yeah, that's okay. been a question. That's so the only occupied potential of the school would be maintenance staff, principal, and secretary? Um, uh, Parks and Rec was notified that the gyms would not be available. 
uh, where the rubberized is. They were not notified. Um, so there's the all-purpose room, too. That's the reason I brought it up. Um, they were not notified about the all-purpose room or any classrooms, but they are aware that the gymnasiums weren't available. Okay. Um, we have extended school year, which is not in that those buildings or right. programs. Okay. We also, um, we, uh, Kids' Choice, we rent to them, but they will be using Chestnut Ridge and po possibly Orchard Valley, which is not affected. So if I summarize this correctly, and I apologize, there's a potential for parks and rec in maybe the all-purpose room or cafeterias um, and other spaces. Is that a possibility? And um, then the probably principal administrative staff and maintenance staff. Yeah, we okay. haven't sat down with parks and rec yet to, to plan that okay. out. But yes, we would sit down with them. And I just want to make sure when I put the bid documents together and advising the contractor that children may be present within the building. Gotcha. And that's the main thing I want to get across. Yes. Okay. And I, think, I don't want to misspeak, but I think in most of the elementary schools, the all-purpose room is in the front of the building. The gym is all the way in the back. Right. So Correct. It, it can be completely contained. Correct. If we were to hold those things in the... And there's a right. major fire break wall or the major wall break where there was the original building in the 1997 edition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Yeah. One, one other. Will there be a project manager assigned since this is a very large project? And if so, would that be you or another... Um, engineer from R&V? So the project manager would be myself. There would be an assistant project manager from R&V, and there would be a construction manager from R&V. Uh, Lenny Sinaglia, who some of you have met, um, who's highly competent, um, as well as um, myself and the uh, assistant project manager, and obviously there would be other staff. But, yeah, I yes. will speak from experience. Um, when we had a renovation done to the school where I was principal, uh, that person was very valuable. Uh, he would he would check in with me every morning to make sure. He'd say, this is where we're working. Just wanted to let you know, if you're bringing gym classes out, please use the other. And, and that coordination and that communication made for a very smooth construction project. So that's why I brought that up, because I think that's an important person to have, especially, you know, for a job this size. Yeah, and uh, Lenny, uh I, I agree with you on that front, and Lenny and uh, Keith, who's also from our office, is actively involved in projects in, in Township, and Keith has seen many, many school construction projects through. Similarly, uh, you're not going to get an inexperienced staff here. In addition, again, there would be third-party oversight with regard to any clearance testing along those projects. Do we, want to consider, do we want to consider the time element on how how well they can, how quickly they can get it done or not in our bid proposal since you mentioned. Yeah, that's kind of what I was mentioning when I, and when I asked about how the bid was going to be written in terms of awards because I don't know how you would ever ha get it all done with one contractor, but I think that's clear that we want it done this summer, however you need the to write it. Understood. And one of the things that I think is the biggest unknown with the time element, to be honest with you, is the concrete. If we ended up removing and having to pour new concrete, the cure time. Um, now, again, we would look you at... You said you're doing that testing this that weekend. That testing is being done on Saturday. And it takes a week to get it yes. back. Yes. Okay. It probably would not have it back to the labs, obviously, till Monday. So it would probably be Monday, Tuesday, the following week. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I know, obviously, I will let you know. Um, the, uh, but one of the things that that does is there's mechanisms we can use to try to accelerate. And one of those things is, again, things that work under high humidity conditions. Those are things we can make sure that we do to try to keep the timing moving along and try to deal with some of the potential unknowns ahead of time. Julie, the one thing, too, that um, if, it, if it starts Turn early, your mic on, Red. The one thing, too, if it starts earlier or it runs late, um, we're in the time of the year where those facilities don't have to be used as much because most of the time the kids will be going outside for, um, you know, for PE. Um, and, of course, if it runs into September again, most of the time they're going to be out. That's why I brought up the fact that we could still use the building, okay, they're safe, and they would be safe going outside. So we may be able to buy a little extra time except on rainy days where we wouldn't have to worry about uh, the PE classes probably till as far as you know maybe the beginning of uh, October so that's one thing that could help us with that timeline I think we could also look at using the um, all-purpose rooms for phys ed because that's where phys ed was prior to 
us building these gyms. That's true. So we can go in to September and mm -hmm. October with the plan that that's what we'll use as a backup if they're not done. The gym wasn't ready at Chestnut Ridge this year. The kids were outside until November or something like that. Um, it's not ideal, but it can be done even at the middle level. Any other questions or comments from the board before we open to the public? If not, can I get a motion to open to the public? Second. All in favor? Aye. 